Hello, hi. Today we're gonna make the most incredible vegan lemon cake. It's actually my favorite cake ever. It's fluffy, it's pillowy, it melts in your mouth. We're gonna use the entire lemon so it's gonna have that perfect tart yet sweet flavor. I think you're gonna love it. Our lemon cake starts off with, whoa. Our lemon cake starts off pretty simply with some very basic dry ingredients. I'm gonna use a digital scale, digital, I'm gonna use a dig, I am going to measure everything with a digital scale because you're just gonna get more precise results that way. We're gonna use three and a half cups of all-purpose flour. That's 440 grams, half teaspoon of sea salt. And we're gonna use baking powder and baking soda. The baking soda is going to neutralize some of the acidity, like the lemons and the sour cream. So we want a little extra help from our friend baking powder that's going to enhance the leavening powers. That's pretty much it for the dry ingredients. Very, very simple. We don't need this for a little bit, so I'm gonna set it aside. Before we move on to the wet ingredients, I wanna prepare the cake pans first because once you mix the dry and wet ingredients, you kinda of wanna get the batter into the oven as quickly as possible. So, two eight inch cake pans. Fastest way to line your cake pan with parchment paper, take a sheet of parchment paper, put it on top, and cut it in a circle. Mine's gonna look a little rustic, but that's okay. It looks like a four-year-old did it, but the cake is gonna be excellent, I promise. You can use cooking spray or some oil, which is what I have. We're going to grease the bottom and the sides of the pan. You can use a pastry brush to brush it all around. Then you take your parchment round, stick it in there, and a little oil on the parchment paper as well. So this method prevents your cake from sticking, but it also prevents the parchment paper from sliding around when you pour in the batter. This makes two eight inch cakes. So if you're feeding just a few people, you can definitely have the recipe, have the frosting, and just make one layer cake. It's a single cake. We're going to move on to our wet ingredients. And since this is a lemon cake, we need some lemons. We're gonna use as much of the whole lemon as we can. To start, we're gonna zest three large lemons. We want a lot of lemony flavor in this cake. Last one. By the way, this is a microplane, hands down the best tool for zesting citrus. Now that we've got our naked lemons, take your knife and you're going to start peeling the lemon, kind of like if you were peeling an orange. You wanna get any of this white stuff off as well. And then when you come across the white membrane in between each segment, you wanna pull that out and then also get rid of the seeds. Basically, we just wanna get the lemon flesh. That's gonna add this really tart lemony flavor to each bite, and you're not gonna to have to use as much juice to get that lemony flavor. This is the fibrous white membrane I'm talking about. That's gonna ruin the texture. You definitely don't wanna bite into this in the cake. Discard it. Now take your lemon pieces and mince them up. Strain any of the lemon juice that's collecting on the board into a strainer or a sieve over a bowl, like I'm doing here, very delicately and we'll collect the lemon pieces in the strainer. It's okay if you lose a lot of lemon juice like I did because you don't need that much. And if you have extra lemon juice, just add it to your water. Now back to our lemon zest, which smells fantastic. We're gonna add one and one third cups of organic cane sugar and the full metric measurements are also in the blog post. <laughs> There's lemon juice everywhere. And maybe in my hair. Now for the fun part, we're going to massage the lemon zest into the sugar. This is going to release all of the volatile essential oils in the lemon zest even more. It's also really fun and therapeutic and makes a fantastic body scrub if you are into that kind of thing. You wanna do this until the sugar is moist and kind of yellow in color. Have a look at this. To the lemon sugar, we're gonna add two ingredients to start. One stick of vegan butter. This has been softening. And we're gonna use an equal amount of oil. Any neutral flavored oil is fine. And oil is gonna make the cake super moist, but it obviously doesn't have any flavor, so that's where the vegan butter comes in. We're gonna get started on the mixing. Electric mixer, or a stand mixer if you have one. We're gonna start on low speed and then gradually work up to medium. Once it's glossy and a little shiny, you're ready to go. It's time to talk egg substitute. My favorite egg substitute in vegan baking is aquafaba. It's just the liquid from a can of chickpeas. We want a half cup of that. I know some folks are gonna ask, is there a substitute for aquafaba? Not really. If you were to use like a flax egg instead, it would make it dense, which can be good for like cookies and bars and some brownies, but not for a cake. You wanna take your mixer on medium speed and mix it for, I don't know, 30, 45 seconds until it's foamy. To this delightful lemon butter sugar mixture, we're gonna add this whipped aquafaba and the rest of our liquid ingredients. This is three quarters cup of oat milk that has been sitting out at room temperature. I personally like using oat milk in baking most of the time because it tends to brown baked goods the best. Now for kind of a superstar ingredient, this is a half cup of vegan sour cream. I have made this recipe without sour cream and with, and it's 
significantly better with it. And a tablespoon of pure vanilla extract. It's a lot, but it's really good. Mixer on low speed. And it's really important that the sour cream, the milk, and the butter are at room temperature because they're going to combine a lot easier. The batter will be smoother and easier to work with. Add the lemon pieces and lemon juice. I like to start with half of the dry ingredients. That way you don't overmix and also gives a chance to the flour to start getting hydrated and start getting some fat coated into it. And you wanna use low speed, don't do medium or high speed. If it starts to get too tough though, switch to a silicone spatula. This is not the kind of cake that you like whip up on Tuesday night when you want some dessert or when your friend comes over. It's absolutely indulgent. It's so worth it. It's got regular flour, regular sugar, vegan butter, vegan sour cream, all the things. So before you ask, can I substitute the vegan butter or oil with applesauce? The answer is no. Now with this cake, these are the ingredients. And they're delicious. The batter should be pretty thick and fluffy, as you can see, but still airy. Since I've made this cake at least 10 times, I already know approximately that it's gonna be 750 grams per cake. And I like to take an offset spatula and just smooth out the top surface to so get an even top and not something that's super domed. A little snack for the chef. These are gonna go in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, 175 Celsius for 30 minutes, center rack of the oven. They should bake pretty evenly if they're on the same rack. If you don't have an oven thermometer, definitely get one. As you can see, this one is pretty on the nose, 351 degrees Fahrenheit, which means our oven is fully preheated. I'm gonna check if this is ready. If you get a few crumbs that are dry, that's fine too, but if you see liquid batter, then you wanna pop it back in the oven. These need to rest for 30 minutes on a wire rack and not just on your counter. They can kind of get soggy on the bottom if you don't put them on a wire rack. These have been resting for 30 minutes and now we have to get them out of the pan. Piece of parchment paper on your wire rack so that when you invert the cake, you don't get like the wire rack shape into your cake. Ta-da! As you can see, it's got this nice, beautiful browned exterior. That's the vegan sour cream, which adds fat and moisture. That's also from using oat milk instead of a different type of plant-based milk. Kind of just have to go for it. Don't be scared. If you greased your pans well enough, this should be pretty simple to come out. I'm very impressed. These are still warm right now. They need to cool to room temperature. Ideally, if you can, chill them in the fridge for at least an hour because the frosting is gonna melt, crumbs are gonna go everywhere, it's gonna be a huge mess. So while we wait, we will make our frosting. This is kind of like if a cream cheese frosting met a buttercream frosting in a bar, and then they also met a lemon. It's kind of like a thruple situation. It's absolutely delicious. This is one stick of vegan butter, softened again. That's why I've cut it into little pieces. We're gonna use slightly more than two cups of powdered sugar. You can see the sugar is pretty lumpy right now, so we need to sift it. Nobody wants a lumpy frosting. On medium speed, you wanna mix the butter until it's smooth. Now for our cream cheese, this is of course vegan cream cheese. You wanna use eight ounces of that, about 227 grams to be precise. And this has been sitting out for quite a while. It takes a little longer than the butter to soften. Beautiful. So right now you can see it's pretty fluffy. It looks like a traditional buttercream cream cheese frosting in the making. We're gonna add half of the sugar, sift it through the fine mesh sieve. If you don't sift your sugar, this is kind of what happens. You get these little pebbles of unblended sugar in your frosting. And so when you bite into the cake, you might get this like powdery cluster in the frosting. Not the worst thing in the world, but we can do better. Mix until it starts to get fluffy. Since this is a lemon cake, I want the frosting to also be very lemony. So we are going to zest a couple more lemons, two tablespoons of zest, which is about two medium large lemons. An eighth of a teaspoon of sea salt, just a little bit to bring out the sweetness, and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I think it would be unwise to frost your cake without first tasting the frosting. You don't have to have a cake stand, but it does make it easier to frost. So do these, these are cake boards. It just makes it easier to frost. When your frosting gets all over the place, you can just slide the cake board out. Our frosting has also been in the fridge for about an hour or an hour and a half, and we're just gonna start frosting it. I don't measure out how much frosting I use on each layer. Back to our offset spatula, most handy tool for cakes. The frosting has flecks of yellow from the lemon zest. It's really beautiful. Now it's time for cake number two. Oh. Now we'll just frost the top. If you don't have one of these, you can just use a spoon to frost your cake. I'm fine leaving the cake like this with not so much frosting, 
but we do have a little bit left. So I'm going to apply some frosting to the sides because of the cream cheese. It's not going to be like a super fluffy buttercream. So you're not going to get like the smoothest bakery style, like professional looking cake. But I think the taste is absolutely outstanding. So hopefully you don't mind. I don't mind. I'm going to briefly refrigerate this cake. So the frosting sets a bit and then we have one finishing touch. Ah! She almost fell off. I very artfully, very delicately removed the cardboard cake board. I added some raspberries on top for decoration. I personally love the tartness of the raspberries with a tangy lemon cake, but you could do strawberries or blueberries, or if you want to get fancy, you can do candied lemons. And then I popped the cake back in the fridge just for like 20 to 30 minutes to allow the icing to set a bit more. Time to cut into our cake. Ta-da! How does it look? Does it look good? Just kidding, I'll be civilized and eat it with a fork. And I'm so excited to dig into this cake. Wow. I cannot tell you how much I love this cake. It is so lemony, it's tart but sweet, it's pillowy, it's like melting in my mouth. You can find the full recipe in the description box below. I think you will love it. Thanks for watching, bye.